a, a survey of about 150 Singapore undergrads at 15 top universities um, revealed that four in five um, of these very bright undergraduates plan not to return to Singapore immediately after their studies, preferring to remain overseas to work. And, okay, we're talking about, I think you mentioned it yourself, uh, that the so-called Gen Y, the young talents, um, value relationships more than perhaps anything else like other incentives. If they stay overseas to work, their relationships will be formed there. How much does it worry you that they might actually stay there and not return to Singapore to contribute? No, I have a lot of confidence with, um about our young people overseas. In fact, I would encourage them to go overseas and venture and work overseas for as long as you think is necessary and as, as you think that you will actually be able to meet your own objectives. Because I, I am a beneficiary of that open system where I, I had a chance to live and work overseas. And I, I tell you that the experience and the skill sets that you gain, you'll never be able to get it in Singapore. But you'll always remember to return. Why? Because your roots are here, your family is here. And I have confidence that they will come back end of the day. Well, there will be some that will stay there for a longer term. We have seen people stay 20, 30 years in countries that you never imagined they would stay that long. But they are not the majority. The majority comes back when there's an opportunity. So it's actually up to the leadership of the different sectors and the government to create the platform, their opportunities for them to come back and for them to be able to own a stake here and contribute. In fact, everybody owns a stake, overseas or not. So I could share this with you. Um, it's a program that will launch on Monday but I can share this here. This individual, he run, he's in a multinational company and he runs that multinational company, Asia Pacific. He does, he's not based here. He's based in Hong Kong. But Singaporean, based in Hong Kong, in his 30s, one of our young business leaders. But he's going to work overseas for a long time and we know that because we think that he's going to be the CEO of the company. And the thing is that we continue to keep in touch. What happens is that he developed a program that is, for, that is to mentor business executive that wants to get ahead. And he actually encouraged a lot of the other overseas Singaporeans that has been successful in business to actually be part of this program. And he designed and developed this program here. And he flies back. He's going to fly back almost every month to do it. So a person like him, so successful, we think he's going to go places. He still continues to do that in his own way. And we encourage that. That's exactly our role as a government. You want to build an environment and a platform for people like that, for people like them to be able to contribute socially, to be able to contribute back to society as well, even though they are overseas. So I would say that no problem, go overseas, get experience. And I have a lot of confidence that based on the Singapore city's living and the way we provide this quality of living, I believe they'll start comparing and they'll appreciate Singapore a lot more when they're overseas but in the years of living in this country, I realized that um, just faith and hope and confidence and antidotes alone um, don't quite you know, make the government feel secure that these people come back. So what other kinds of measures um, does the government have to make sure somehow that we maintain that kind of bond, that no matter how itchy-footed you are, that somehow you'll find your way back home? So, you know, we have this overseas Singaporean unit who go around the whole world to organize Singapore Day and the parties and all that to keep everybody warm and updated. Um, we even have an internet portal and all. It is something of a personal choice. We can only do that much, do what we can. End of the day, we must make sure that Singapore is worth living and worth remembering and worth, worthwhile enough for everyone to want to come back. And I think that's the challenge we have. It's... It's a soft spot. Can we, did we hit you in a soft spot? I think no matter how big a party we organize for you and all that, it is just a very short-term event and activity. It's about the long-term relationship you have with Singapore. And that's one thing that the leadership, no matter what, it's just like procreation, maybe bonus and all that. It's still a personal choice. But I think if we can build this society to be a bit more caring and more sharing and to be able to show compassion... I think many of them out there would appreciate Singapore a lot more and would ultimately come back. Hi, my name is Wan Chi. I'm from Nanyang Business School, NTU. So um, you have been talking about people going overseas. So what about the people staying behind? So how do you intend to incorporate them into our workforce? And eventually the Gen Y will take over the reins of management. So how do you intend to smoothen this transition from the baby boomers and also the Gen X in, into an era of the Gen Y? Singaporeans are always uh, included in anything we do, isn't it? 
I mean, we, we have never left them out. Um, opportunities are created for them. I think the issue here is the expectation again. Um, it's whether you want to come forward, you want to grab that opportunity, or you want it to be given to you. There is the difference there. So if you want to succeed, I would say that work really hard, you know, look for opportunity, grab it, and the platform is there. And the question is that, what to you is success? You want work-life balance, you want to work shorter, working hours and all that, but if your job just requires you to work longer hours, then you say, well, then this country is not giving me what I want because I want to work shorter, working hours, I can't. So it's about managing your expectation, managing within the constraints and this space. So this is an open society, open economy. I can tell you my own experience in China, you know, I never had uh, access to whether it's political leadership or giving my vo letting my voices being heard at all, at all. But the thing is that although when I was overseas, the business opportunities are much larger uh, to the extent where I can, just to quote this Chinese phrase, is 四倍公半 or 四半公倍. Here, I feel that I'm 四倍公半. Because in three months, I cut a contract, 1.5 million, 2 million. When overseas, China, 四半公倍. Three, four months, I cut a contract, 10 mil. Because they have the size. But what, what else do they offer? Quality of living, healthcare, and all that. So I came back because of education. And that is the part where I felt that, wow, it's inclusive of Singaporeans. I don't feel second class here. I'm a citizen here. For the bridging of the age gap, mm, well, it, honestly, when the Gen Ys take over, in fact, I think some of them are already doing very well and starting to take over some of the companies and we're seeing them coming up, uh, up and coming, uh, rising stars. Uh, I wouldn't say who, who adopt to who, or who adapt to who, but I say the changing society and when they run it, the, uh, just don't forsake the elderly generation and have a, you know, be understanding enough because end of the day, yes, you're going to take it on and lead it. It's about adapting to it and it's about accommodating everyone, being inclusive. And that's exactly what we're doing today, having so many elderly policies today to take care of the elderly and to make sure that everybody still have a place, still have the platform, still have a job, still have a home. So Singapore government provides the basic need. Uh, jobs, housing, health care, education, wherever it takes, we try to provide the fundamentals. When the Gen Ys take over, I would say that continue to provide the basic needs of, uh, of any citizens of our Singaporeans. And the rest is up to, up to us to strive uh, to be able to succeed. But if you say equal pay, everything equal, then we either become equally rich or become equally poor. I don't think that's the system you want. Uh.